Everybody's glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's stand to our feet. I don't know if you've seen this morning, but you have seen some people wearing a t-shirt with our new series that uh, Pastor's doing called Culture Creation. And they are free. So have you not gotten your shirt, definitely before you leave today, head to this foyer right out here and pick one up for you and your whole family. And we encourage you to wear it out in the community, but also wear it here during our Culture Creation Series. I hope that you came in with a praise in your heart this morning, because I know I did. I came to praise the name of the Lord. So worship with us as we praise and we glorify our Father this morning. Sometimes you gotta dance through the darkness, sing through the fire, praise when it don't make sense. Sometimes you gotta stare down the giant, worship from the lion's den. Sometimes you gotta shout it from the mountains, louder in the valleys, trusting that it's gonna get you there. Sometimes you gotta welcome the wonder, Wait for the answer. Worship with your hands in the air. I'll praise you anywhere. Praise, giving praise, giving praise in the highest. Praise, giving praise, giving praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Giving praise, giving praise in the highest. shackles brave in the battle worship with your hands held high i'll praise you anywhere praise giving praise giving praise in the highest praise giving praise giving praise in the highest he is worthy yes he is worthy of all of the praise giving praise giving praise in the highest praise, give it praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Oh, we praise you, God. We sing faithful all my life. Blessings day and night. Countless reasons why I'll praise you anywhere. Every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, oh, faithful all my life. Blessings day and night, countless reasons why. I'll praise you anywhere, oh, every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, oh, praise, give it praise, give it praise in the highest. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. He is worthy. Yes, he is worthy of all of the praise. Give him praise, give him praise in the highest. Praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest. you anywhere 
every promise kept, goodness every step, each and every breath. I'll praise you anywhere, oh praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest praise, give him praise, give him praise in the highest peace. glory God and all of the honor God it belongs only to you God we came into this house to glorify your name and lift you up let's enter into a time of worship this morning oh God we worship you I count on same God that never fails, oh, will not fail me now, oh, you won't fail me now in the waiting. Oh, the same God who's never late is working all things out, oh, you're working all is your word.
circumstances, despite what we're going through, whether we're on the mountain or whether we're on the valley, God. God, we choose to praise you, God. That's our choice, God, because we know when we praise you, God, things turn around, God, and they work in our favor. How many believes that? We thank you, dear Jesus. God, we worship you this morning, Father. We need you more than ever before. Yes. I'm calling on the God of Jacob. Whose love endures through generations. I know that you will keep your covenant. I'm calling on the God of Moses, the one who opened up the ocean. I need you now to do the same thing for
your faith rise in this house today oh if you came needing something you came to the right place this morning you hear about what God did then oh but he's that same God he can do that for you today oh you moved in power then God move in power now you are the same God you are the same God you were a healer then oh he is a healer now you are the same god you are the same god you were a savior then and you are a savior now you are the same god yes you are you are the same god oh you freed the captives in this house today you are the same God you are the same God oh you touch the lepers oh I feel your touch right now you are the same God you are the same God so God my God I need you oh God my God I need you Standing on your faithfulness, yes I am, on your faithfulness, oh God, oh God, my God, I need you, oh God, my God, I need you now, yes I do, how I need you now, oh rock, oh rock. I'm standing on your faithfulness. Yes, I am on your faithfulness. We stand upon your faithfulness, God. Oh, you never change. Oh, God, you never change. You know, that statement, I stand on his faithfulness. Church, we gotta know that that's the truth. We've gotta know that who he was yesterday is who he is today. What, what that encourages me with is that all those stories, all the characters, all the people of the Bible that we read about, when we read of what God did in their life, he heard them then, he hears us now. He healed them then, he can heal us now. He set them free then, he can set us free now. What we've got to come to is an understanding that, Lord, I need you. I need you in my life. I need you in this moment. I need you in this situation. I need you here with me right now. Listen, church, he's already here. We don't have to invite his presence here. He is already here with us today. What we get to do is say, Lord, come into my life. Come into my heart. 
come into my situation. Lord, I open myself up to you and I give you this moment. I give you this crisis. I give you this situation. I give it all to you now because I'm standing on your faithfulness. You were faithful then, you're gonna be faithful now. That's the hope I have. I don't have to listen to the enemy tell me that God doesn't hear my prayers. I don't have to listen to the enemy say, you messed up yesterday so God's not gonna to listen to you today. I stand on his faithfulness. I stand knowing that he is the one who set me free. He is the one who delivered me. And all he looks for is for me to raise my hands and say, Lord, I need you now. I need you in my situation now. Can we go to the Lord that way right now? Can you just cry out to him wherever you are, whatever you're facing, whatever you need, whatever healing you need in your life? Can we just call on the name of the Lord together? Lord, I need you now. Lord, I worship you and I praise you. And Lord, I believe that you are the same today as you were yesterday. Lord, I believe what the word of God says, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Lord, I believe that you are faithful. I trust in your faithfulness. I stand on your faithfulness today. Lord, we may be in this room and we may be struggling. Maybe we're struggling with a, a struggle in our life, a, a, a conflict, a, a turmoil, something's broken in our heart. Hearts. Something's broken in our relationship. Something's broken in our friendships. Lord, I pray right now, let your Holy Spirit come into our lives. Because, Lord, we need you. We need you to set a captive free. We need you to set our hearts free again. We need you to bring salvation to us again. We need hope again today. We need peace again today. And we know, Lord, we have encountered your goodness and we have encountered your faithfulness. But Lord, we praise you and we know that we stand on you today. Lord, we worship you and we praise your holy name. I love you and I thank you. I thank you for every person that's here, Lord. I ask you to be with them encourage them and strengthen them be with our prayer needs as we as we look through our prayer requests lord i pray let your holy spirit do a work in people's lives lord they need you now some of them don't even know that you're what they're looking for but they need you now lord i pray make it known to them help them see it today hallelujah lord we worship and praise you today we give you the honor and the glory today and I ask you just to touch us today in the name of Jesus. Can we just sing through that chorus one more time? Just, just stay in this moment of worship for just a moment. Just, just pray to the Lord and tell him how much you need him right now. Let's sing it together. Oh God, my God, I need you. Oh God, my God, I need you. standing on his faithfulness. He is with you today. He loves you. He cares about you. And he's inviting you in today to seek his holiness, to seek his faithfulness. He loves you and cares about you. Can we just give the Lord a clap offering of praise today? Lord, we thank you. Thank you even now that you've heard our prayers. You're answering our prayers. You're moving in our situations. Lord, we worship you and praise you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, amen and amen. You may be seated for just a moment. I'm gonna ask our ushers to join us. We're gonna to continue to worship with our tithe and with our offerings. I wanna thank you so much for all that you're doing. I thank you for your faithfulness. Because of your faithfulness, because of your giving, we were able to actually help 
uh, God's pit crew uh, respond to Hurricane Helene and the devastation that went on. Over the weekend, we were uh, Friday and Saturday, uh, the staff was all at our minister's meeting. and It was heartbreaking at times to talk to some of our friends from Southwest Virginia who their communities are just devastated and just in turmoil and a wreck right now. But because of your faithfulness, we were able to respond as a church to that. We gave a donation to God's pit crew on behalf of this church to respond to that need. And it was because of you. Amen. Give the Lord praise. This is what the church is supposed to do. We're supposed to rise up and help in situations like this. And so thank you for being a part of that. Thank you for your faithfulness that enabled us to do that. If you want to continue to give, if you didn't get a chance, if you would like to give directly to that, you can do that. You can, you can give to God's pit crew. We've got a slide that has the QR code, but you can go out to our Facebook page. It has the QR code on there as well. We shared it that if you want to give anything, even if it's a dollar, that helps that ministry meet the needs that are going on. They've already sent truckloads of supplies to affected areas and they're continuing even now to do that. And so I'm thankful for the Lord and what he's doing and how he's going to help people. And so there's the QR code. If you want to give towards that, you're welcome to do that. But again, this is why we give. This is why we are faithful in our giving because God puts it in our path ways that we can make a difference. We may not be able to go to these torn up areas and help them recover and help them get back. And we say, well, what could I do in those moments? We can pray, but we can also send the resources that are needed. We can, instead of us trying to partner and say, okay, let's us send stuff down. We can already partner with a ministry that's doing this and knows how to do this well. And we're going to do just that. And so thank you again for your faithfulness. Let's pray today as we give in our offering. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for this church. I thank you for faithfulness to you. I pray that you would bless each and every one of them today, Lord, that your hand would be upon them, that you would minister to them. Lord, many give out of their own needs or still faithful in their giving, yet they have needs in their lives. I pray meet their needs today, financial needs, spiritual needs, emotional needs, physical needs. Lord, I pray minister to them. I pray for those who have been devastated by this hurricane that just went through that are still even now trying to regain power and, and truly just now starting to assess the scope of damage that was really done to their communities. And Lord, I pray, be with those who are impacted. It's so easy to look from a distance and say, wow, what a shame. But Lord, when it's your house that's devastated, when it's your community that's devastated, Lord, bring hope to those areas and bring healing to those areas and bring peace into the hearts of those who have been impacted. And I ask you to bless them in the name of Jesus, we pray. Use this offering, Lord, for your kingdom and your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Let's continue to worship. Yes, let's continue to worship. If you were, um, stand back to your feet. Last week we were introduced to a song that we're going to be singing for this series called Made for More. I just wanted to get into your spirit because we were all made to do so much more for the kingdom. So let's sing this together. Oh, I know who I am. Because I know who you are. Oh, the cross of salvation was only the start. Now I am chosen. Yes, it 
ask our team who's going to serve us communion if you would come and get ready to serve us. I love this song. I love this idea that I am who I am because of Jesus Christ. I know who I am because Jesus Christ set me free. I love that thought because if it's about me, I'm in trouble. I just got to tell you, I'm in trouble. If it's about how good I can be on my own, I'm in trouble. But I am who I am because of Jesus Christ. I love this reminder that I was made for more. And I love this because it wasn't just 
a general blanket statement that Jesus said. It says, he knows your name. He called you by name. When he died on the cross, he died with you in mind. He knows you. He knows where you've been. He knows what you've gone through. He knows where you're going. And yet he made us for more because he loves us and cares for us. And so as we get ready to take communion today, don't just take communion. Don't just go through the motions of it. Today, engage with it. Engage in this moment. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Maybe all you can do is come up and get the elements today and say, that was hard for me. Let him speak to you today. Let his love speak into your life today. Let his hope speak to you today. Let him remind you that you were made for more and that he knows you, that you're chosen and free because of his sacrifice on the cross. Let us pray and prepare our hearts. Lord, I love you. I thank you today. Prepare us right now. Soften our hearts as we prepare to take this communion. Remind us today that we are who we are because of you. And that you love us. And you care about us. You died on the cross to set us free. And we rejoice in that today. And so I ask you to be with us today, Lord. You don't need to be a member of our church to take communion. You just need to be a member of the body of Christ. And so as we get ready to take, let me just give you some instructions. If you're in this section over here, you're going to be served by these folks right here. Just come down this aisle, receive your elements, and return that way. We want you to engage. We want you to be sacred. This is a sacred moment where we get to honor the Lord and we get to be reminded of who he is. These two sections, you'll come down to this serving station right here. Just come down the middle aisle, receive it, and just go right around through the outsides. God loves you. God cares about you. God is calling your name right now. What do you need from him? What do you need in this moment? This is a moment to draw in. This is a moment to be reminded that God loves me, that God is with me. This section over here, these are your servers. You come down this aisle right here and go around this side when you get your elements. But as you come... Would you just take a moment to let this Holy Spirit just, just touch your life and just speak into your heart. As you come, just say, Lord, I love you. I'm here. I, I, I want to hear from you. I want to be with you today. Would you just do that together? Let us pray one more time. Lord, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for this reminder we have of you and be with us in the name of Jesus. Would you come and receive the elements, return to your seat, and we'll take together in just a moment. I remember you, Lord. I was lost, I was blind, I was running out of time. Sin separated, the beach was far too from the far side of the chasm, you held me in your side. Oh, you made a way across the great divide. Left behind heaven's throne, build it here inside. And then at the cross, oh, you paid the debt I owe. Yes, you did. Broke my chains, freed my soul. For the first time I had hope. And thank you, Jesus, for the blood applied. Thank you, Jesus, it has washed me white. Thank you, Jesus, you have saved. my tomb of sin. Oh, you were buried for three days, but then you walked 
tried out again and now death has no sting and life has no end oh for i have been transformed by the blood of the church that's what we hold in our hands today we hold a reminder of what Jesus Christ did on the cross we hold a reminder of the very event that set us free the very event that washed as white as snow the shedding of Jesus' blood on the cross of Calvary and so as we hold this today, this is just grape juice in a wafer. But it's so much more than that. It's a reminder from our Heavenly Father that I love you. And I want you to remember how much I loved you because I set you free. And that's what we do every time we take communion. We're reminded of two things. We're reminded of his sacrifice. But Paul says we're also reminded that he's coming again. We're reminded every time we take this cup and eat this bread, we're reminded <clears throat> not only did he set me free, but he's coming back for me. And if I trust that he set me free, that he died for my sins, then I can trust that he's coming back because he's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And so as we hold this in our hands, we rejoice today. I may be in a valley today, but one day I'm going to walk the streets of gold. I may be in a struggle today. I may have physical ailments today. But one day I'm going to walk healed and whole with my Savior, Jesus Christ. That's the, that's the reminder we hold in our hands today. And this is what Jesus did when he was with his disciples. The night before his crucifixion, he gathered them for the Passover meal. As part of that meal, he took the bread and he broke it. And he taught them, saying, this is my body broken for you. 
to do this in remembrance of me. And so as we take this way for this morning, I want you to be reminded that Jesus loves you. And he made you whole today. Let's take the bread together. Hallelujah. Lord, we thank you and praise you. In the same way, he took the cup and he talked to him saying, this is the new covenant. My blood shed for the remission of sins. And so as we take this cup, I want you to be reminded that because of the blood of Jesus Christ, you have been washed clean. Not almost clean. Not part of the way there. He washed you in the blood and made you white as snow. Made you as clean as you could ever be. He made you a new creation. Gave you a new heart, a new mind, a new outlook, a new attitude, a new future. And so as we take this cup this morning, let's rejoice in the Lord today. Let's take the cup together. In your own way, can you just take a moment? to just worship him and thank him. Lord, I love you. Lord, I rejoice in you and I thank you. And Lord, I honor you today. Thank you for the reminder today of your love. Thank you for the times when we struggle to be reminded. When the enemy has us convinced that you're not there for us. Thank you for these reminders that you are with us today. That you've never left us. You've never forsaken us. You've never walked away. You've never hidden from us. You have always been with us, and I thank you for that. Thank you for that. And be with us today. Cleanse us and purify us today, Lord, that we may walk with you and know you even more. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Praise team, thank you for leading us in worship this morning. And thank you for being here with us. You may be seated. Thank you for being here with us. If you're part of our church family, I want you to know how much I love you. And thank you for being here with us. And just love seeing you every Sunday. It makes me happy to see you. If you're new with us, then I want you to know that you have found a good church family to be a part of. Welcome to the family. Welcome. I'm glad you're here with us. Amen. Amen. Today I want to continue our series. We've been talking about culture creation. If you came in a few minutes late, these shirts are not just for us on the stage. They're for everybody in the, in the room today. We've got shirts available uh, in that foyer over there after service. Stop and pick them up. We even have kid sizes this time. Listen, we learned. We learned last time. We got kid sizes today. So make sure you stop by and pick up a, a shirt because, again, we want to create a culture. We don't want to just have a campaign or get excited about a topic for a couple weeks and then it just fades off. We want to create a culture where people are saved and they grow spiritually. Our mission is the same. Our direction is the same. We want to create a safe and loving environment built by loving God and loving others so that people find salvation and spiritual growth. That's who we are. That's who we are as a church. That's what we long to do. We long to create that. Last week, we talked about the importance of creating that safe and loving environment. Why do we do it? How do we do it? What's the purpose of it? How do we do this personally? And I talked with you about growing and engaging in our spiritual formation. And we have to take the ownership. I have to take the ownership for my life. I can't expect you to make me grow. I've got to have something in me that says, I want to grow closer to the Lord. And I've got to take the steps necessary. And you've got to do the same thing. We can have the greatest programs. We can have the greatest ministries. We can have the greatest steps in the world of how to get you to grow spiritually. But if you don't engage in it, you're not going to grow. You've got to take the step that says, how do I make this personal? How do I grow this? How do I do this? And it was really a call to action. That's what our whole series is about. Is it's a, Really, it's a call to action that says, let's be deliberate about reaching people for Jesus Christ. Let's be deliberate in helping people know who Jesus Christ is and how they can grow spiritually. Let's be that church. Let's engage in our spiritual formation so that we can grow stronger and we can help people find salvation and spiritual growth. Because here's what I know. I can't take somebody where I have never been, right? 
I can't take you where I've never been. So if I'm not growing spiritually, how are you going to grow spiritually? If you're not growing spiritually, how are the people you influence ever going to grow spiritually? They can't until we walk them through and say, this is how we do it. This is the steps you take. This is, the, this is what you do next. This is how you take that next step of growth. This is how you grow in this moment. And so we talked about that. I gave you a survey at the end of the, ser- at the, end of the sermon last week, a, a, a way to kind of assess where am I in that process? Where am I, what steps have I taken and what steps do I need to take yet? And so if you haven't filled those out, I encourage you to fill them out. We've got a QR code we'll have at the end of service. You can go to that QR code and fill out your survey. You can uh, hand them out. Pastor Tracy has uh, a few uh, of the handwritten ones still available if you need them that way as well. But let's be that church. Let's be dedicated and determined and passionate that we're going to make this last more than just a few weeks. That this is going to be more than just a campaign and a catchy shirt that we wear from time to time. That this is going to be the culture we create in this church. That this is who we are at the core of our being. That we love the Lord and we love others. That we love God and we love others. That we want a safe and loving place so that people can find salvation and spiritual growth. And so I talked with you and said that that kind of culture is built on things. It doesn't just happen. Listen, we come to church, it's not just going to happen. But a culture will develop. And so we've got to develop the right culture in order to grow spiritually, in order to find salvation. And so we talked about it. We're going to talk about prayer today. We've got to build this on prayer. We've got to build it on inviting people, inviting them to church, inviting them to grow. We've got to build it on stewardship. We've got to be a good steward of what God has entrusted to us. We, The talents and gifts and abilities that you have, how are you using those? How are you stewarding what God has given to you, the resources that you have? How are you stewarding that? And then we're going to talk about serving. How do we serve so that we can grow. Listen, I don't want you serving because we just have a spot in the nursery that needs filled. No, I want you serving because it's going to help you grow spiritually because maybe you don't need to be in the nursery. Listen, I don't need to be in the nursery, right? Maybe you don't need to be. Listen, I hurt my back two weeks in a row picking up a chair. I can't, I can't be in the nursery on the floor with those little kids, but we, we've got to help We've got to find, where do I fit? Where is my place? How is God using me? And and so we're going to talk about that as well. Let's start today with prayer. How do we do this? Prayer has to be the foundation of everything we do as a church. Because here's what I know. Without prayer, it's just a program. Without prayer, we're just a social event calendar for you. We're just putting fun events together so you can... Feel good about yourself, and that's not what we're here for. We're here to help people grow and know the Lord, and that comes through prayer. It comes when we dedicate ourselves to a prayer life that says, Lord, I want to know you, and I want to understand you. And we create this environment where people are free to find the Lord at their pace, where they're free to find the Lord and know that God has something in store for them. They feel safe to come to the altar and seek the Lord. And here's what I know. As we talk about prayer, sometimes, here's what I know. Sometimes people aren't ready to come to the altar. But can I let you in on a little secret? The Holy Spirit can get you in the fourth row, just like he can get you in the altar. We don't have to drag people to the altar to pray. We just need to pray that God gets a hold of them, that God touches their life, that God moves in their heart, that God speaks to them. Now, do we need to be in the altar? Yeah, there's something special about coming to the altar. The altar is a place of sacrifice. It's a place of giving of ourselves, and that's what we do every time we come to the altar. We give of ourselves to the Lord, and maybe it's an offering of praise. We don't have to always just come to the altar when things are bad. Amen? I can come to the altar when things are good. I can come to the altar. There's all those Deuteronomy and all those things that we read about in Leviticus and those things that, that we tend to skip over because, oh, I don't even understand half of that, right? There's offerings in there that are given so that they're praise offerings and wave offerings to rejoice what the Lord is doing in our lives. Not every offering we give is a sacrifice of guilt and shame. 
Sometimes it's a sacrifice of, Lord, I just rejoice in you today. I just want to praise you for what you're doing. I want to thank you for being in my life today. Lord, I just thank you because I just sense your presence and I just rejoice in you and I love you and I think about you all the time. And we rejoice and we give of ourselves. And so for our time together, I want us to talk about what does prayer look like? How do we have a powerful prayer life? What is a powerful prayer life and what does it look like? And so I want to share two Two prayers we see in the Bible that help us understand this. The principles are the same in each prayer, but I want you to see these two very different prayers in two very di unique situations. The first is found in Joshua 10. It's in the Old Testament. If you have your Bibles, you can turn with me there. Joshua chapter 10. As you're turning, let me just kind of set the stage. Moses has died. Joshua is now in control. He's now the leader of Israel. He's now marching them into the promised land. They have been promised a, a place for the Israelites to sit. They've, they've been promised a land that is theirs. It's the promised land. Moses wasn't allowed to take the people in, but Joshua was allowed to take them in. They had to go conquer and, to, and fight the enemies that occupied this land. In Joshua chapter 10, this is early in the process, we see that they've just defeated Jericho in a little city called Ai. And the next city that comes along is Gibeon. Gibeon hears of the Israelites coming, and so they send a peace treaty. They send a, a group out to, to, to bring peace and, and sign a peace accord with, with Joshua and the Israelites. And so, and so we see that, that they were afraid of the Israelites. And so the other kings in the region don't like that this king of Gibeon signed a peace treaty. So they mount a, an army to go against Gibeon. The king of Gibeon says to Joshua, hey, listen, remember that peace treaty we signed? Yeah, I need to cash that in right now. You need to come help me fight this battle. And God promises Joshua that they'll defeat their enemy. The Bible actually says, and I, I love this little line, the Bible actually says that in the midst of the battle, God sent hail down on the enemy. And the Bible records that more people were killed by the hail than they were by the Israelite swords. God was fighting for the Israelites. God was standing and fighting for the people. And so Joshua prays this because Joshua prays this prayer because they're winning. They're pushing the enemy back. The enemy's in retreat and they're, they're, they're advancing on them and they're able to defeat them. But yet time is running out. It's starting to get dark. And if it gets dark and the enemy is able to slip into the darkness, they could either regroup and come back stronger or they could slip away and, and the enemy would be, be free at that time. And, and so Joshua prays this prayer. And think about this prayer that he prays. Listen to the prayer. In Joshua chapter 10, verse 12 through 14, it says, On the day that the Lord gave the Amorites over to Israel, Joshua said to the Lord in the presence of Israel, Now think about this. This isn't just a quiet little prayer that he prays in the corner so that he says, Well, if it doesn't work out, no, I won't be embarrassed. If God doesn't show up, I won't be embarrassed. He steps forward, and in the presence of all of Israel, in the presence of the army, he stands there and says, Son, Stand still over Gibeon, and you, moon, over the valley of Ajalon. So the sun stood still, and the moon stopped, till the nation avenged itself on its enemies, as it is written in the book of Jashar. The sun stopped in the middle of the sky and delayed going down about a full day. There's never been a day like it before or since, a day when the Lord listened to a human being. Surely the Lord was fighting for Israel. I love that line. The Lord listened to a human being. The Lord who put the, the planets in motion. The Lord who, who put the earth on rotation. The Lord who, who set the, the calendar and set the days and said, this will be night and this will be day. He's the one who looked and said, I will stop everything because my child prayed. I will stop the very sun in the sky because my child prayed and asked for it. The second prayer is over in Kings, 1 Kings 18. Pastor Wooden, when he was here, shared this as well, but I want us to see something in this prayer. It's the story of Elijah on Mount Carmel. He's fighting against false prophets. They're trying to decide who the real God is going to be. And so Elijah gives the false prophets time to pray to their God. The, the competition was this. We're going to build an altar. We're going to, you're going to let you pray. I'm going to pray. Whichever God calls down fire and consumes this altar, that's the one who wins. That's the God we're going to serve. And so Elijah gives the prophets of Baal all day long. They have all day to prepare and get ready. And the, the Bible says that they, they spent the whole day chanting and yelling and cutting themselves and dancing around, and, but no fire. 
No answer. Elijah then takes over and he says, okay, let's rebuild the altar of God. He, didn't, he wasn't going to use the pagan altar. He said, let's rebuild the altar of God, the altar that we have torn down as a people. Let's rebuild that altar that God told us to build and sacrifice on. Let's rebuild that altar and we're going to sacrifice on that. And he says, but just so you know that God is really God, he said, pour water on it. And as a matter of fact, Dig a trench around it and fill that with water as well. Because I want there to be no mistake when God shows up. Again, think of how powerful that was. He's praying to a God and he's saying, if fire doesn't come, this is going to look really bad. Right? I'm not hiding in the corner praying and saying, Lord, I hope this really works out. He's standing in front of his enemy. He's standing with the people of God behind him who don't know if they want to serve God anymore or not. And he prays this prayer in verse 36. It says, at the time of sacrifice, the prophet Elijah stepped forward and prayed, Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, let it be known today that you are God in Israel, that I am your servant and have done all these things at your command. Answer me, Lord. Answer me so that these people will know that you, Lord, are God, that you are turning their hearts back again. Verse 38 says, then the fire of the Lord fell. And burned up the sacrifice, the wood, the stones, the soil, and also licked up the water in the trench. When all the people saw this, they fell prostrate and cried, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Here's the amazing part. This is the part I love about these two prayers that we read about. It took me longer to set them up than it did for them to pray it. It took me longer to speak about them than it did for them to actually speak the prayers. And here's the power for us today. There's three lessons that I want to share with you that helps us understand the power of prayer. The first is this. Powerful prayers are simple. They're simple. I I don't know any other way of saying it. They're, They're simple. It amazes me when I look at these two prayers how simple they were. Joshua is in the midst of a battle, and he just stops and looks up and says, Lord, I need your help. I need this sun to stand still so we can defeat this enemy. I need the moon to hold off for just a little bit because I need to defeat this enemy. And with that simple prayer, God was able to stop the heavens until Joshua and the Israelites were able to defeat their enemy. Elijah is the same story. He's standing there, he's waiting, he's, he knows that he's called to be there, he knows that he's supposed to be there, and he looks and says, Lord, let him know this is your idea, not mine. Let him know that I'm just a servant who's doing what you told me to do, but Lord, I'm asking you to show up in this moment and make it unmistakable that you are the God of Israel, and with that, the fire falls and everything is consumed. That's the power of of these prayers. They're so simple. And here's the lesson for you and I. The power of your prayers are not found in the amount of your words. It's not found in having all the right cliches and all the right Christian words that you can throw in and sound spiritual and sound like you've got it all together. That's not where the power of your prayer comes from. The power of your prayer is not found in putting together the proper structure and speaking eloquently before the Lord and and just putting it out there and it sounds so beautiful and harmonious. You know, you listen to David in Psalms, half of those are prayers, right? But they're songs that he's singing to the Lord. Maybe your prayer, you read that and you're like, my prayer doesn't sound like any song I've ever heard. That's okay, because that's not where the power of your prayer comes from. Here's where the power of your prayer comes from. The power of your prayer comes from the fact that you are praying to the creator of the universe. You're praying to the one that can stop the sun in the sky if he wants to. You're praying to the one that can drop fire from heaven if he wants to. You're the one who can drop hailstorms on the enemy if he wants to. I'm here to tell you the power of your prayer is not in the words you put together. The power of your prayer is in the fact that I bow my knee before the creator of the universe. But I don't just bow my knee before the creator of the universe. I bow my knee before the Lord and Savior who knows me by name, who called me out of the darkness and into the light, the one who set me free and set my soul free and gave me freedom from sin and shame. That's the God I serve. That's the God I get to pray to. The power of my prayer is not in being able to put together this great prayer that sounds so great. The power of my prayer is when I can bow my knee before the Lord and say, Lord, I need you now. I need you here. And that may be the only thing you can get out 
But I'm here to tell you, God hears those prayers and says, child, what do you need in this moment? How can I help you in this moment? What enemy do I need to scatter in this moment? What do I need to push back in your life this moment? And church, we've got to learn that my prayers don't have to sound good. They just have to be sincere. They just have to be from my heart. And I know it can be tough at times. We hear other people pray and we say, boy, I can never pray like them. Can I let you know a secret? God's not waiting for you to pray like them. He doesn't care if you pray like them. He just wants to hear you. Just be encouraged. He wants to hear your voice. You say, well, pastor, how do you know that? Because Jesus told us in Matthew 6. In Matthew verse, chapter 6, verse 7 and 8, Jesus tells us, but when you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who's in secret. And your father who sees you in secret will reward you. Now listen, this isn't contrary to what, what we just read in Elijah and, and in Joshua who prayed openly and prayed in front of people. That's not what he's saying here. What he's speaking against is the Pharisees who used to go stand in the street corners and pray out loud with such eloquence and such words because all they wanted was for the people around them to hear how good they prayed. They wanted the people around them to look and say, boy, that person must be very spiritual. Listen to how they are. And the Lord said, don't do that. He said, you really want to hear me? You really want to reach me? He said, just go into your prayer room. Just find you a place and get alone with me. And let's talk for a little bit. Share your heart with me. Share your brokenness with me. Share your questions with me. Share your concerns with me. Share your doubts with me. Just open up and come, my child, and sit and let's talk together. And he says this. He says, because... Your father who sees in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think they'll be heard for their many words. The prophets of Baal thought they were going to be heard because they prayed for hours, chanting the right phrases and saying all the right things and, and, and had the choreography down exactly to what they needed to do in that moment. But that was not the power of their prayer. He said, do not be like them. He said, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. We don't need to try to sound like anyone else. We don't need to try to remember the phrases that they use. We don't need to try and say it the way that they said it. We don't have to try and have the cadence that they had in their prayer. We just need to pray. God is just looking for his children to come to him in prayer and say, Lord, this is what I need today. This is where I'm at today. This is how I have... Ha what I'm dealing with today. And he wants to hear you pray. He wants to hear your words. He wants to hear your personality come out. He wants to hear your thoughts. And he wants to hear the sincerity of your heart as you express your faith to him that says, Lord, <laughs> this is tough, but I trust you. There's still power in prayer today, church. I'm here to tell you God is still a healing God. God is still a delivering God. God is still on his throne. He is still in control. He is still able to do the impossible today. The power of our prayer does not rest in our words. It rests in him. So when you're worried about it, don't worry. Just speak. If you say, well, Pastor, I don't even know if I can do that. Type it out first then. You got notes on your phone. Make a note. Write it out. Share it with the Lord and say, Lord, I, I couldn't put my words together, but this is the best I've got. Don't be afraid to pray because some of the most powerful prayers you'll pray will be the simplest words you speak. Some of them will be the simplest phrases you say will be the ones that change your life forever. So don't be afraid to pray. Here's the second one. Powerful prayers are specific. These two prayers we read, they were specific. They were in a situation, they needed help, and they asked for the help in the specific way that they needed. Joshua and Elijah didn't beat around the bush. They didn't say, well, I don't know, Lord, we could just use a little bit of help over here. No, they prayed and said, Lord, this is what we need. I need this in my life. Now listen to me, God is not a vending machine waiting for you to just insert your prayer and tell him what you want, and he's just going to give it to you. We don't, we don't get that privilege from the Lord. I don't get to tell him what to do. I don't get to dictate to him anything. What I get to do is say, Lord, this is what I need in my life. I'm broken, and I'm hurting, and I need you. I don't need to hide that from you. I don't need to be afraid of that. I don't need to try and whitewash it. I don't need to say, well, Lord, it's been a 
it's been a rough couple days. I'm, maybe I need some help. No, I need to come to him and say, Lord, you've seen my last couple days. You know what I'm going through. You know where I'm in. You know the decisions that are weighing on me right now. Lord, I need you now. And if you're struggling with something, then be specific and talk to God about it. Matthew 6, I love this. Matthew 6 says, he already knows what you need. You say, well, then why do I need to pray? Because he's not going to invade your space. I've got to invite him into that situation. I've got to invite him into my circumstance. I've got to invite him into my brokenness. He's not going to just push me over and say, okay, this is what we're going to do today. He says, no. But if you will ask me, I will give it. If you will open your heart, I'll heal it. If you invite me into that situation, I'll speak to it. If you let me in your storm, I'll calm it. But you have to be the one who asks because I'm not going to force myself. And so start to pray and start to be specific and understand that I don't have to, I don't have to give everything. Listen to me. When you're praying with people, you don't have to give your deepest, darkest secrets away. You don't have to share all the pain and hurt that you've been going through in order for somebody to pray for you. Listen to me. You, it's okay to say, you know what? I just need prayer. Well, what do you need to pray for? It doesn't matter. The Lord knows. I just need prayer. Just call my name before the Lord. I need prayer. We don't have to give our deepest, darkest secrets. But here's what I would invite you to do. Give them to the Lord. Give it to the Lord. That brokenness that you will not talk about to anybody else, talk to him about it. Say, Lord, this is the brokenness I feel. This is the betrayal I feel. This is the loneliness I feel. This is the brokenness I feel. Lord, I need you in this moment, and I need you to heal me, and I need you to be with me. And he will answer us. He hears us in those moments. So spend time praying with him. Be honest with him and open up to him. Invite him into those moments. Because, again, he already knows what you're going through. He's just waiting for you to invite him in. He's waiting for you to say, Lord, this is open to you. I want you in my life. Here's the third lesson. The third lesson is this. Powerful prayers are submissive. The power of our prayer is not that I get God to do what I want. He's not my vending machine. The power of my prayer is that it gets me to do what God wants. That's the power of my prayer because when I start praying and I'm sincere and I'm honest... And I say, well, Lord, I'm broken, and I'm this, I'm that, and Lord, I need you to do this, and I need you to do that. You know what the Lord says? Do this, and I'll be with you. Be obedient, and I'll be faithful. Trust me, and walk with me, and I'll be there for you. And he speaks into our life, and we, he shows us what to do, but it's about us becoming submitted to him. It's about us saying, Lord, I'm not here to tell you what you need to do. I'm here to ask you what I should do to be in your will. What should I do to follow what you want in this situation? And both of these prayers, we see that. Neither one of them said, Lord, I need you to help me so that I look good in front of my people. Joshua was just starting out. He only had two, two battles behind him. He had a whole nation still left to fight. He could have said, Lord, I need you to validate me in this moment. I need you to speak up for me in this moment. I need you to help me look good in this moment because, Lord, you know I need to look good in front of these people. He said, Lord, help me defeat your enemy because I want them to know that you're the God of the universe. I want them to know that you're the one who gave us this promised land. Elijah was the same way. He didn't pray and say, Lord, man, it's been rough. I'm here, I'm on the mountain. Lord, make me look good. Boy, Lord, elevate me up. Let me, let me look good. No, he said, Lord, I want them to hear you and I want them to turn their hearts back to you. He never looked and said, Lord, I want them to follow me. He said, I want them to follow you. And both of these prayers were intended to align with God. They wanted God's will in the situation. That's why the sun stood still. That's why the power fell from heaven. It fell because the Lord was being glorified. And the Lord was saying, Lord, what do you want me to do? The people were saying, Lord, what do you want us to do? And so the same is true in our lives. The greatest prayers will be the ones that align our heart with God's heart. The greatest prayers we ever pray will be the ones, the fastest prayers you'll ever pray that'll get answered are the ones that align you back to the Lord. That get you back on track of what he's already called you to do, what he's asking you for, what he's speaking into your life. That's what we read about in 1 John, in 1 John chapter 5, verses 14 and 15. 
It says this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we asked of him. We love this passage of scripture. We love it. We say, Lord, anything I ask, you're going to give it to me. Lord, your word says that when I ask, you're going to give me what I ask for. We miss the phrase. And the key phrase is, according to his will. Lord, I'm asking this according to your will. Not according to my will. Not according to my wishes. Not, Lord, I want to wipe these people out because I want to prove how right I am. Lord, I want them to see who you are. And so I'm speaking on your behalf. That's the power of our prayer, is that it submits our will to God's will. We may have our plans and we may have our dreams, but the power of prayer is demonstrated when we follow the example of Jesus in Luke chapter 22, when he's praying the night before he goes to the cross. He keeps saying, Father, if there's any other way, let's do it that way. He's so excruciating. He, he's, he's in turmoil. He's stressed out. He's saying, Lord, how can I get out of this? But he always came back to not my will, but your will be done. I'll do it your way. Whatever that way is, that's the way I'll do it. Prayer team, if, praise team, if you'll come back up. <clears throat> I want to make one last point about prayer before we close. Prayer is never a substitute for preparation. I want to say that again because I want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. Prayer is never a substitute for preparation. Here's what I mean by that. Joshua didn't just get to sit back in the camp and say, Lord, just go fight that battle for me. We're, we're too busy having fun back here. You just go fight that battle for me. Let me know when it's over, and we'll come in and we'll take the spoils. No. He prepared his army. He prepared his, his fighting force. They marched out to battle. They fought in the battle. They engaged the enemy. They stood their ground. And then he prayed. He prepared, and then he prayed. Elijah didn't just sit on the mountain and say, well, Lord, if you want it solved, just draw down fire and let them go. Let, let them go home after that. No, Elijah prepared. He rebuilt the altar of God. He did what was needed to do. He restored the worship to where it should have been, the altar to the way it should have been. And then he said, now let me call down fire from heaven. He prepared and he prayed. Listen to me, young person. You can pray for an A on that test all you want, but I'm here to tell you, if you don't open a book, if you don't do the work, if you don't go to class, guess what? You've got to prepare, and then you can pray and say, Lord, bless my efforts, bless my work. It's the same in our workforce. It's the same in our family. We can't just sit back and neglect our family and say, Lord, I just need you to fix, I need you to fix my wife. I've got to pray and say, Lord, what do I need to do? Let me prepare. Let me do what I know to do. And then I'll pray that you restore my family. I'll pray that you restore my home. I'll pray that you would do what only you can do. See, we've got to do what we know to do. And then pray and ask God to do what only he can do. Praying doesn't neglect, doesn't negate the need for us to do our part to do the things he's called us to do already. The things we know we should be doing right now. Stop living in sin, start living for him, read your Bible, study the word, be, in, be around believers. The things we already know, we need to do those. And then say, Lord, help me, be with me, strengthen me in this moment. And you say, well, pastor, what about the person who never even knows Jesus? What are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to earn their salvation before they come to the Lord? No, that's not what I'm saying. But here's what I will say. They have to repent of their sins. We don't get to just say, Lord, forgive me of my sins and clean all that up and let me go on my way. I have to repent of my sins. I have to be sorry and I have to ask for forgiveness. I have to prepare. And once I prepare, he can do a work. Once I prepare and say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, then in my prayer, he will forgive me of my sins. We've got to prepare and we've got to be ready. Let's do what we know to do. Let's be the church that God has called us to be. We know what he's called us to already. He said, this is how the world will know you're my disciples, that you love one another. We know what we're supposed to do already. Let's do that and then pray. 
and say, Lord, we've done all we can do. We've set the table as best we could. We've created the environment the best we could. But Lord, I ask you to do what only you can do now. I can invite the people to church, but I can't get them saved. But I can create the environment where God can get a hold of them and draw them in and they would know that Jesus loves them and cares for them. God isn't asking us to do his part. God didn't look at Joshua and say, well, make the sun stop. He didn't look at Elijah and say, well, call down fire. Let's see what you got. God will do his part. We need to do our part. Spend the time. Grow in your relationship. Engage in your spiritual development. Walk with the Lord. Know that he's with you. And let's trust God to do what only he can do. Because as we build a culture of prayer in our church, let's build it on prayers that are powerful prayers, that are simple, specific, and submitted to God. Prayer needs to be the foundation of our safe and loving environment. It needs to be the foundation of everything we do. That's how we hold people, help people find salvation. That's how we're going to help them find spiritual growth. We do it by loving God and loving others. When we do it by praying and making what we do about God's will and not our will. Saying, God, make us famous. No. Make you famous, God. And show me how to do that. Would you stand with me today? Lord, I love you and I praise you. I ask you to be with us in these next few moments. Let your Holy Spirit speak to us and draw us in. And draw us into your presence. Help us, Lord, to pray powerful prayers. I praise you and I thank you. I rejoice in you today. As we get ready to pray and worship this morning, I want to let you know I've asked a few people to serve on a prayer team for us. These people every week are going to serve on a prayer team that's going to be here for you. To pray alongside of you. I'm going to ask the following folks if they'll come down and stand in front. Dinah, if you would come up front and face the congregation. Come on. Thomas and Sharon are on our prayer team, but they're not able to be with us today. Julian and Ingrid, if you would come. Come on down. Come on, Julian. Deshani, if you would come as well. Ben and Evelyn, would you come? Philip and Sangeetha, would you come? Sister Peaches, would you come? Every week, this is our prayer team. Just spread out across the front here. Spread out across the front. Come over to this side. So, a couple of you come down. Come over to this side. Yeah, y'all stay there. Y'all stay there. Listen, I'm not doing this for show. I'm doing this because we want to pray for you. Because I want you to know that God loves you and cares about you. I want you to know that we care about you. And that you're never standing alone when you pray. That there is always somebody who's willing to pray for you and pray with you. And so I've asked these 11 individuals to stand up here weekly and be a part of a team that prays for you. I've asked them to pray for you during the weeks. They have fasted and prayed leading up to this so that God would move in your life as we start this. And here's what you need to know. They're not here to counsel you. They're not here to fix you. They're not here to judge you. They aren't here to try and get all your deep, dark secrets and tell me all the family history and what's going on. They don't need to know the details of anything you need to pray for. They're here to bind their faith with you that says, I love you and God loves you and we're going to pray together. We're going to seek the Lord together. I'm going to bind my faith with you because the Lord has something for you that he wants to do in your life. And so I've asked them to be a part of this. And so as we worship this morning, if you have a need, if you would like prayer, Come find one of these folks. They're going to spread out, and they're going to be ready to receive you when you come down. They want to pray with you, and they want to seek after the Lord with you. But know that God loves you, that God cares about you. And this is an example of doing what we know to do and trusting God for the rest. What I know to do is to pray for you, and I'll trust God to do the rest. And so as we worship this morning, if you need prayer, come down and pray. If you want to just come to the altar and worship, 
Come to the altar and worship. Just come stand out and be, be a part of it. Listen, we're going to praise the Lord. We're going to seek the Lord in this moment because here's what I know. You have a need in your life. Maybe that need is just to thank the Lord for what he's done in you. <laughs> Maybe it's just to bring an offering of praise to the Lord today that says, Lord, I'm thankful that you've been so good to me. Thankful for what you've done in me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for being with me. And so as we worship this morning, would you come and just seek the Lord with me? Let's seek the Lord together. Come, join me in the altar. Let's pray and let's worship together today. Lead us in worship.
moment and in your own way and in your own heart can you just express your thanks to the Lord just in your way in your heart speak your words maybe you were up here praying for a need by faith would you just thank the Lord that he heard your prayer that he cares about you that he he honors your prayer can we pray that way today Lord I love and thank you I rejoice in you I thank you for what you're doing in this altar. Thank you for what you're doing in the hearts and lives of people. Lord, I ask you to be with us and touch us today. Be with your children. Lord, you have been so faithful to us and we just wanna thank you. Thank you, Lord. It seems so inadequate, but it's the words we have to say thank you. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you that even when we've messed up, you have never Abandon us. You have never walked away from us. You're good. You're good. Your goodness chases after us. Your grace flows after us. And Lord, I love you and I thank you. Thank you for the times that you've been with us. You've calmed our storms. We've been through the valleys before and yet you've always been faithful. And so I ask you, Lord, to just be with us. Be with us as we leave this place. Be with us as we give our lives to you and as we pray prayers that are submitted to your will. Help us and strengthen us. Help us to strengthen our prayer life with you, Lord, that we would know you and walk with you, that we would find our strength in you. And I rejoice in you. And I rejoice in what you're doing. And we give you the praise and the honor and the glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Can we just give the Lord a clap offering of praise? Lord, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you today. Before I let you sit down, I'm going to ask you to do something. I'm going to ask for your help with something. Because here's what I know. I love having a prayer team. They're going to be here week in and week out to pray for you and speak to you and help you and pray for you. But here's what I know. We can pray for one another, right? It's not just this team that can pray. We can pray for one another. And so here's what I want to ask you to do. Over the next 21 days, starting tomorrow, would you fast and pray with me? We've got two major events getting ready to come up. We've got Friendsgiving on November 3rd, and we've got our Christmas play on December 22nd. It's a great opportunity to invite people to our church. It's a great opportunity to get the unchurched to come to church and be with us and fellowship with us and be here and experience a safe and loving environment. But here's what I know. It's meaningless without prayer. I want us to pray and ask the Lord to help us, to help us to grow over the next 21 days, that individually we would become stronger in him and pray that people would find salvation at these services. Pray that people would find spiritual growth and breakthrough at these services because here's what I know. God loves people and God has a plan and purpose for each and every one of us in this room. We were made for more. Amen?
We were made to follow the Lord and he is with us every step of the way. And so I'm going to ask you to fast and pray with me. If you don't know what to do, fasting is just simply giving up something that's important to you. Over the next 21 days, find something that's important to you. Maybe it's food, maybe it's videos, maybe it's Facebook, maybe it's some other social media platform, whatever it is, maybe it's TV for you. Whatever it is, it's going to draw you back and remind you, give it up for 21 days and trust in the Lord that he's going to move. Can we do that together? Amen. You may be seated. Let's, I'm going to give you a few announcements before you go. And I'm so excited. I'm so excited for what God is doing. I'm excited for what God is going to do in these events that are coming up. I believe God has in store breakthrough for people's lives. I believe God has in store salvation for people's hearts. I believe that God has in store reconciliation for people's families. And I'm believing that he can do all of it. That's what this cultural creation is all about is finding out how to do that. Finding out what God has in store for you and what he's wanting to do in your life. And so I encourage you to engage in it and be involved in it. If you didn't get the chance to fill out a survey last week, you can do that. We've got a QR code that you can follow that will take you to the survey. and You can fill it out online. And we'd love for you to be a part of that and do that. Again, don't forget that we have shirts available. Celebrate this. We are creating a culture at this church of what God is going to do. And we're going to trust him to do great things because he is worthy of our praise and he is worthy of our submission. And so I'm excited for that. Friendsgiving is coming up on November 3rd. I want to invite you to be a part of that again this year. Invite your family and friends. It's right around the corner. Listen, we're already in October. I can't believe it. We are in October. November's right around the corner, so get ready. We're going to have a great time. We've got invite cards available today. The greeters are going to have those. They can pass them out to you and give you, give you those as you leave today. Make sure you pick up a stack of them and hand them out. Here's what I know. The invite cards are going to do us no good sitting in this church, Right? They need to be out in the community. And so take them and take them out in the community. Invite your family and friends to come out and be a part of this. And so pick some of those up. We're going to do our meal like we did for joint service. We're going to do chicken and drinks from the church. And here's what I ask you to do. Bring your dessert. Bring a side dish. Bring something that you can share that day. We're going to have a great family meal together that day. And so there's a sign-up sheet in the back. We'd like for you to sign up so we know what we have and what we need to get for that day. And be thankful for that. Uh, we're going to have our games outside after service, after we eat. We're going to go outside and have a great time of fellowshipping and playing. And we've got all kinds of activities. We've got uh, cornhole and nine square that'll be up. We've got, uh, we've got uh, pickleball out there we're going to have. Uh, we've got bounce houses for the kids. We've got a bounce house for you big kids if you really want to get in it. But, uh, but we want you to be a part of it and come out and play. Have a great time. It's just fellowshipping and being together uh, as we do that. Uh, we are going to do some giveaways again that day. So it's going to be a great day. Uh, you can get some gift cards that day. So uh, bring your people. You know how it works. If you bring a visitor, you get an extra ticket. So bring your people. We're going we're gonna to celebrate and have a good time. And then, uh, of course, we do need help with it. We need to set up tables and chairs and uh, set the place, set the environment for what God is going to do. So if you're willing to serve, if you're willing to help us with this event, you can sign up for that as well. Uh, if you have given your heart to the Lord but have not been baptized in water, October 20th is your day. Mark it on your calendar. Get ready for it. October 20th is your day to be baptized. We'd love to baptize you. We're going to do it right here in service. At the end of service, we're going to have it. And so we're going to be excited for this. Uh, we're going to be excited to celebrate what God is doing in your life. And so this is your chance. This is your moment to share your faith and let people know that I have made a decision to serve the Lord. And so sign up for that. Uh, you can sign up on the back table for that. Uh, pizza with the pastors, it's the first day of the month, first Sunday of the month, so we get to have pizza together. So if you're new with us today, if, you, if you're new to our church and have not been to pizza with the pastors, uh, you don't need to sign up, it's, we're, it's here. Uh, we're ready for you. All you need to do is go to, the, go to the cafeteria, it's on this side of the building, and we'll have people to show you how to get there, but we'd love to uh, spend a few moments with you just to, to, to get to know one another and invite you to that, so come out and be around for that. Uh, we will not have pizza with the pastors in November uh, because we're going to be doing Friendsgiving. So we're going to have a big meal together, all of us. So uh, I'm not going to feed you pizza. We're going to do chicken. So be ready for that. All right. 
If you've not filled out a Connect card, if you're new and did not get a chance to fill out your Connect card, you can do that now. You can drop it in the boxes on either side of the foyer. Uh, there's black boxes on the wall uh, that you can drop those Connect cards in. Uh, I'm thankful for you. I love you. And we'd love to connect with you and welcome you to the church. All right? Let me pray one more prayer over you as we get ready to go. Lord, I love and thank you. Thank you for each and every person that's here today. I ask you to be with us as we leave this place. That the prayers we pray would be powerful prayers. That would be prayers that are focused on you. Focus our hearts on you today, Lord. And be with each and every person that's here. Meet their needs and walk with them today. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for being with us.